Hello and welcome to another Midnight Showing. As always, I'm Kelly, and I just got out of the Intimidation game. And non-spoiler version, wow. Third biographical film I've seen in the last couple of weeks, and third one that was amazing. I mean, I can't stress how good this film is. Uh, I complained about the direction in Salma last week, uh, just for the really amateur stuff that happened in the first third. Like, uh, me being able to see the people in their reflections and just a few other really, really shot weird angles that didn't jive with me. But uh, <laughs> I have none of those complaints about this film. It is just as powerful as Salma, if not even more so. Really showcasing that there is no true good or evil and sometimes evil must be done to for the greater good, and really balances that just so well. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Keira Knightley are perfect in this film. They are a uh, small synopsis for those that haven't heard of the Intimidation Game. It is about a man, Arthur Turling, T U R I N G S, but. Uh, He's a mathematician in Britain, one of the greater mathematicians of our time, from what they made it sound like in the film. Uh, <clears throat> he was hired by the British government, more specifically the uh, MI6, to decode the uh, German Enigma, which is their coding system for their radio frequencies and whatnot. It is... <laughs> It was supposed to be impossible. I think they said that the Enigma had uh, 159 million million combinations. 18 zeros. It, it, the thing is... Uh, <laughs> the thing's a freaking beast! But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just the story of how they finally end up uh, cracking it, and when they do, the after-facts of it. It is by far the, the best film of last year. And again, just like with Salma, the stupid, stupid politics of it, it's nominated for Best Picture of the Year for 2014, even though it clearly has come out in 2015. But uh, enough of the politics of it. I mean, I just go see this film. It was amazing. You want to see Benedict Cumberbatch at his best? You want to see Keira Knightley at her best? Go see this film. You want to see Mark Strong in yet another supporting cast role that is <laughs> wholly beneath him, but he still plays it as if it's the lead role? Go see it. It's This film was amazing. There's not a single person who I couldn't think of that wouldn't love this film. Uh, going into the spoiler territory for a little bit, I'm going to try to keep this one a little bit short because I don't want to ruin everything in the film. It's, it's, um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, is a homosexual, uh, mathematician who <laughs> is completely 100% genius. Uh, he's very literal. He doesn't understand a lot of the, uh, ins and outs of the way people talk, the way that he describes talking is like deciphering a code. Because people are always saying things, but meaning something else, implying things, and you're just supposed to know what they are, even though he just doesn't understand. So, uh, he plays them off like that, so he's a very literal person. So, he tells them, uh, uh, one of the guys comes up to him on his team, and it's just because they're going out for lunch, and just comes up and say, Hey Arthur, uh, we're going out to lunch. And he's, just, and he's like, mm-hmm. He, he's obviously trying to invite Arthur with him, but he just doesn't understand that because he's not being literal. Either that or he's just being a complete jackass about it. Either way, it's one of the best scenes in the film. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he's just, he's, uh, can you not hear me? And he's like, no, I can hear you. I'm, I, I'm trying to invite, I'm inviting you to lunch. And he turns to him and he's like, uh, that's not what you're saying. That's not what you said. You said you're hungry. 
That's all you said. And it's just one of those ones that you really, really get in the mindset of him. Uh, I don't know what it is about Benedict Cumberbatch, but he is just so good at playing these very eccentric characters. And I... Sherlock, he's nothing like Sherlock Holmes the, that he plays on Sherlock. He's nothing like that. And there, he's a really fast talker. He's smarter than you. He hates you. You bug him, and he doesn't. And he proves that he's smart with a slight essence of suave, but once the pressure gets on, you can start to see the cranks in his armor as he's trying to figure out things at speed. But inside of this one, he's a lot more reserved, a little bit more... He, he talks and uh, stutters a little bit like this, and um, uh, he's always pulling back his hair, which gets in his way, because apparently the emo comb-over was popular. Back. Okay, that was one thing I can make a joke about. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very, very relatable. You can see the man's dilemmas, especially when it comes out later that he is a homosexual. Uh, and it does play a part in... Uh, the way that he thinks, and that is the entirety of this film, is dissecting how uh, Arthur Turing, Toodling, I, I can't pronounce it, but how he thinks and how it ends up saving everybody by him solving the enigma. Kinda. I don't want to spoil that part for you because it's a really, 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 really good argument about everything of... of Vigilantism, the greater good, it's just, I'm not going to say what happens when they solve it. If you do know the, about this, you might not, because it was only declassified a year ago. And that was what was the inspirational part about this, is that the book came out after this was all declassified, so no one got in trouble. And uh, Arthur ended up getting a royal pardon uh, by Queen Elizabeth herself just last year for all the work that he did on this project, even though, sadly, he died before he probably should have. I'm not going to tell you exactly how, because that's a, another pivotal part of the mo movie, and it really helps carry the weight. Um, only one other thing I really wanted to talk about before I call this one, the... It's really weird. Why do films try to throw on something or tack on something that doesn't really mesh with the rest of the film or what it was getting at? Uh, this whole film is basically about the greater good and solving the puzzle and what it means to truly solve the puzzle. Um, but part of, the, part of it is the fact that Arthur is a homosexual inside of the film. And it determines the relationship he has with his male co-workers. It determines the relationship he has with Kira Knightley, who he does legitimately care about enough even to propose to her. But he could never love her in that way. He does love her, and there's one point where he, he doesn't trust the people around him, and he tries to break it off by first telling her that he is a homosexual. Because he was told that once people find out about that, uh, <laughs> it probably isn't a good idea to let her know about it. Admittedly, 100% relatable and believable. So he tries to break it off by telling her. She basically guessed <laughs> and doesn't care. And she goes on to this big speech and rant how what they have isn't... is beyond something like that. It's not about physical. It's about mental. They love each other for their minds. They're both intelligent. They like talking to each other. They understand one another better than anybody else would inside of even the room that the people that they work with. And finally, it just kind of like clicks in Arthur's head what he needs to do to try to break this off and to get her to leave. He tells her that he doesn't care about her, that it was all about Enigma, and that now that they've solved Enigma, he, she needs to tattle off. She doesn't need to do anything. It doesn't work, but it still ruins the relationship they would have had. And that's the big heavy weight of it. 
uh, but again, this homosexuality plays a big part in that, as well as the relationship with the other members of his team. And even to what happens after the war finally ends. I'm not going to spoil that, because I really, it's one of the really big, heavy moments of the film, but when it finally ends, and like all biographical films, especially ones that come out this year, because they all ended the exact same, they showcase pictures of the old one, and they said, uh, uh, Arthur, it says when they died, and uh, how they died, and the circumstances of in this case, the state secret, it tells you that they, the files were declassified uh, by Britain in 2013. Told you about the pardon, all this other stuff. Great. But there's one thing about it that feels so tacked on. The second message that pops up after you find out that he ended up kidding, committing suicide. He commits suicide, and why he does it is pretty harsh, but unfortunately, there was just this one line about all of the homosexual people that died in Britain as due to the laws of homosexuality, and that one line feels that it's just tacked on at the end because, it, 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 as much as that played a role in why he committed suicide and how everything else happened and uh, how, and then understanding him, that one line about how, I think I said like, 47,000 estimated dead to bloody law, British homosexuality laws of indecency and all that stuff, and you're just like sitting here, oh, why did they put that up there? If there's one complaint, one complaint I have with this film, it is that line. Now, I'm not going to go into the politics of the subject. Personally, what happens behind, in my opinion, what happens behind closed doors is your business. Okay? Just don't recruit me. But, this... And I know that nowadays, it's being more and more accepted. It, it, on all fronts. Hell, even Utah has gay marriage laws. Okay, okay. And back in the 40s and the 50s, especially in Britain, this was a bad thing. Indecency was against the law. And I say indecency in quotation marks because homosexuality was illegal. And bad things happened from that. A lot of people uh, died from uh, the medical treatments for castrations. And a lot of people died inside of the prisons, because the prisons weren't all that secure. They're, all the treatments I just labeled off, they still exist. But they're mostly there for rapists and pedophiles these days. But, again, we don't need a line about how many of those people died from that, or the bad laws, or any of the other crap. Because that's not what this film was about. If it was about that, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But it wasn't. It was tacked on in the end, and it was apparently more important than the declassified files, and the pardon from the Queen, and the fact that he's being taught in schools now, and the fact that he created one of the first computers, we notable computers, that have ever existed. All the, the big stuff, the important stuff, is less important than how many people died to these laws. It feels tacked on, and for stupid reasons. So, if I have one problem, it is that line. And that's basically the only thing. Everything else, I don't want to spoil it for you, because this film is amazing. Final verdict, go see this film. Pay full price. Support this film. It was that good. If you don't find it as good, eh, your opinion. But this one is one of the ones I'm going to be buying the second it hits. Uh, target shells, regardless of the cost. It's just a must-own, and you will enjoy every second of it. Now, uh, just kind of an update. I'm hoping to have my editing done this week. Now that I have car problems, I'll have a little bit more free time on my hands to 
work on it, and I should have a f the first episode of Cardmaster's Corner up and ready this week. Should be in the operative word. It, at best, maybe two weeks. Or at worst, maybe two weeks. But I am close. I am very, very, very close to getting it done. And also, there won't be very many midnight showings for a little while. Because my car broke down on the way home <laughs> from the theater, actually. So, I don't know how long it's going to be fixed. It's going to take to get fixed at this moment. I don't know if it's going to be two-day inconvenience to two weeks inconvenience. It's up in the air at the moment. So, there might not be very many midnight showings. Because I might be low on money also for car repairs. So, I'll try to get that done as fast as possible so I have a video coming out soon and then expect to see more of these as always uh, please like share and subscribe if you find ways to, uh, for me to improve both these videos and the Cardmasters Corner video coming out soon uh, let me know in the comments below and see you all next time